Neurology quiz number 83. Describe the clinical features, investigation and treatment of CNS Whipple disease. Whipple disease is a rare condition caused by a gram-positive bacteria, Trophorema whipplei. It is a systemic disorder that involves the gastrointestinal tract and also affects other systems like the cardiovascular system, central nervous system and joints. Most cases are reported in North America and Europe. The disorder is associated with HLA-B27. Mean age of onset is 55 years. It is more frequent in males than in females with a ratio of 4 is to 1. The organism seems to be soil dwelling, which explains the increased prevalence in farmers. Typical presentation includes gastrointestinal symptoms from malabsorption such as weight loss, diarrhea and abdominal pain. The majority of patients have GI symptoms. Arthralgias and arthritis are migratory and non-destructive and involve large joints. Attacks are usually acute and last hours to days. Sacroiliitis is common, but ankylosing spondylitis is rare. Pericarditis and endocarditis are common. Uh, from 50 to 75 percent. Lymphadenopathy occurs in about 50 percent of the cases. Skin hyperpigmentation can be seen in up to 40 percent. Fever is present in 30 to 50 percent of patients. Neurologic involvement. CNS involvement is common. Postmortem shows CS CNS involvement in more than 90 percent of the patients. Clinical features are noted in 15 to 45 percent. Neurologic disease can be the presenting feature in 5 percent. Neuropsychiatric symptoms are most common with cognitive, psychiatric or behavioral changes seen in 70%. Ocular manifestations. Vertical gaze impairment develops in approximately 50% of patients. Oculomasticatory or oculoskeletal myorrhythmia is considered pathognomonic and is seen in 30% of patients and usually occurs in association with vertical gaze palsy. Ocular myorrhythmia consists of continuous convergence, divergence, horizontal pendulum nystagmus, such that the eyes rhythmically look at and then away from each other. In ocular masticatory myorrhythmia, eye movements are time linked to dystonia of the muscles of mastication. In ocular skeletal myorrhythmia, eye movements are time locked with a non masticatory facial dystonia or dystonia of a limb. This is a video of oculomasticatory myorrhythmia. Note inward and divergent movement of the eyes and dystonia of the muscles of mastication. This is an example of oculoskeletal myorrhythmia. Note abnormal eye movements as well as abnormal movements of the facial muscles. Myoclonus and seizures occur in 20%. The triad of dementia, ophthalmoplegia, and myoclonus is suggestive, although not specific for CNS Whipple disease. Hypothalamic disturbances, including disorders of sleep, occur in 40%. Ataxia is also common. Diagnosis. This requires a high degree of suspicion and extensive testing to rule out other etiologies. The condition should be considered in patients presenting with concurrent cognitive impairment and other neurological features, especially oculomotor involvement, in the setting of poorly characterized chronic bowel problems or migratory large joint arthralgias. Intestinal biopsy. Diagnosis requires the identification of Trifurema viplei in the affected tissue. Duodenal biopsy, that is positive for pass positive foamy macrophages or Trifurema viplei PCR, is the method of choice to diagnose systemic Whipple disease. However, it can be negative in cases with predominantly CNS manifestations. Here the figure on the left is a duodenal biopsy showing foamy macrophages in the lamina propria with a hematoxylin and eosine stain. The figure on the right shows a jejunal biopsy stained with PAS. Note PAS positive macrophages in the lamina propria. CSF testing. This may be the best way to diagnose CNS Whipple disease. The most reliable CSF test is a positive PCR for Trophorema Whipplei, which is positive in 70% of patients. WBC are typically lymphocytes, but past positive macrophages can be seen. Oligoclonal bands may be present. Brain imaging. MRI can be normal and findings when present can be non-specific and include solitary or multiple parenchymal lesions. A paper from the Mayo Clinic reported involvement of the hypothalamus, midbrain or mesial temporal lobes with minimal enhancement. High signal intensity in the corticospinal tracts was also described. 
Here the MRI on the left demonstrates increased signal intensity in the hypothalamus and the anteromedial aspect of the right temporal lobe. The MRI on the right shows bilaterally symmetric high signal involving the corticospinal tracts, brainstem and brachium pontis. Treatment. Current treatment recommendations include a two-week induction treatment period with IV ceftriaxone followed by a 12-month course of oral trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. A prolonged clinical remission rate of more than 90% has been reported with this regimen.